Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about the five biggest mistakes that you can make when traveling internationally. Let's go. Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Haley. I am a travel blogger and a 14 year hotel veteran. If you are new to this channel, please hit subscribe and don't forget to follow over here on social media. Would love to connect with you there. Okay. I've been thinking about this because one of the problems with this topic is I have to confess to you guys that I have made one of these mistakes more than once. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be kind of funny to talk about. Nobody's perfect, but um, these are some things that I've noticed traveling internationally, especially since I've taken people internationally with me. Um, that necessarily didn't heed my warning or didn't understand something. So I figured these were some great topics that we could talk about. All right, number one <laughs> is you need to look at the calendar. Pay extra close attention because a lot of countries start their calendars on Mondays and not Sundays, like here in the US. Um, and I have made that mistake twice both in Mexico, oddly enough, where I have booked excursions on the wrong day because, you know, I'm usually up late at night looking at things. And um, it's because their calendar started on Monday versus Sunday. So keep an eye to that, you know, keep an eye out for that. That's a really easy mistake when you're used to that. Um, I'm ashamed to say that I've made this twice. Um, but thankfully, in both situations, the tour operators worked with me and we were able to still go on our trips and do what we wanted to do. So... I am not perfect, I don't claim to be, but I also learn by example so I can share it with you. All right, number two is currency. There's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to currency. One, you can't assume that every place is gonna take the American dollar. When we went to Italy in April, 2019, <laughs> my mother-in-law and you know my husband's grandmother you know, we're told by other people that everywhere will just accept the American dollar. Now, where I found that's the case sometimes in the Caribbean, Mexico, um, Europe, no. <laughs> Our money is actually, as of right now, worth less than their money. Um, so you need to have the currency. Having the proper currency, um, I think is also a sign of respect as well. Um, I highly recommend ordering currency from your bank ahead of time. I bank with Chase here in my little town and I can usually get my currency in a day or two if I'm ordering euros, if I'm ordering pesos, what you know, whatever I'm ordering. So you can do that. Never ever exchange your money at the airport either. That is the worst exchange. Some of the best exchange rates I found when traveling overseas is to actually just pull money out of an ATM. So keep that in mind. Number three is language. You need to learn some of the language. It kind of goes back to that mutual respect thing. Americans are unfortunately known for kind of being pigheaded when it comes to overseas because people don't bother to learn some of the language. Um, you know, I know there's plenty of people that get hot and heated here when people don't speak English here in the United States, but um, it's a sign of respect. Even as difficult as the language is, if you can at least learn to say hello, please and thank you, you know, similar, you know, smaller things like that, that's going to go a long way. It shows that you're trying. Um, I personally use Rosetta Stone. I'm going to link it down here. I'm not being sponsored by them, but I have found their program works really well and they have a monthly fee. It's not as expensive as, you know, I remember it being back when it first came out when I was in school. So I, I highly recommend it. I really enjoy it. It does truly make you more conversational, I think. So there's a tip. And also when you speak the language, you are less likely to get bullshitted. And I'm sorry that this turned into a PG-13 video, um, but bullshitted by con artists. I mean, they're everywhere. They're here in the States. They're in Europe. They're in the Caribbean. Just know your stuff. <sighs> All right. Number four, flight times. You need to look at your flight times, especially when you are going west the times are going to change. Like a lot of flights that I've taken over to Europe now, I get in the next day. So when you're making your hotel reservations, you need to make sure you're not making them for the day that you leave. You need to look at that plus one, plus two, or whatever your travel um, schedule says on your plane ticket. Make sure you pay really close attention to that. And last but certainly not least, 
you need to research the hotel. So one of the things that we have found, especially from going to Europe, Europe, generally speaking, has smaller hotel rooms, especially Paris. <laughs> they are very small rooms and you need to pay attention to the bedding size because a lot of times here in the US, a standard you know, family size room is two double queens. I have found that's very much not the case, especially over in Europe. So you really need to read the fine print detail on what the bedding situation is, you know, what the size of the room is so that you can make the right decision for you and your family. Um, you know, you'll see them as triple. Sometimes what you'll see for a triple room in Europe is three twin size beds in a room. It's very, very different than here. So those are my tips for today. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other recommendations that people should know and make sure you guys also check out if you're on Facebook, I have a travel community called travel with a flair, you know, all that fun stuff where we can shoot ideas back and forth. It's really just an open forum and discussion area. So until next time, I will see you next Wednesday. I have new videos up here on Wednesdays as part of my New Year's resolution. And if you are having traveling FOMO, check out my other travel vlogs. So until then, I will see you next week. Bye, guys.